Okay, here is where we were staying. Um, you can see some of Kenya in the background, and then there is um, the gate for security reasons, and we also had a guard, so that was very comforting to my mother. <laughs> here is um, the house that we stay at, the missionary's house. Their names are Don and Paula Nichols, and they have started a ministry called Them. And basically what they do is they help start church plants in um, Kenya, in the bush, and those are the places that we were working um, as well. And so that's their vehicle with their uh, info on it. Here's my bed. It was a bunk bed, and I got mosquito net, and it really made me feel like a princess. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I'm thinking about getting one for myself. Just that. But it did work very well. It kept me bug free the whole entire two days. And here is our flyer for our medical camps. We did six different medical camps, um, and then we also did like a medical clinic in an orphanage, which was a separate day. Um, and they put these up all around the churches to like let the people know when we were coming to which church. And here we are. Every day we would pack up all of our stuff. Um, you can kind of see them. There are these blue crates that are inside of that vehicle that had all of our medicine in them. And then that guy on top is Alex, one of the guys on our trip. And he is packing up the, what we used as tables, which is kind of like siding of a building. And uh, we had to put those on the top. And then we would drive about two hours to get to our um, site. And our sites look like this. These are the churches there. And um, we went to a church like this almost every day. The first day was a little different. It was a rock church that they were building. And then what we would do is we would unload first and get everything inside. And then the people would start coming. And you would see people walking from like way off in the distance. And you would see them and they were coming. And they would sneak up on you too. You'd think that you'd be out in the bush, you know, going to the restroom all by yourself. Bam! Hello! Thanks for coming to the clinic today. <laughs> Here is triage. And this is where I worked. And the guy in the blue was also my partner. His name is Nick. And basically the people would come to us and we would take their blood pressure and their temperature. And for the children, we would also weigh them on that little scale that's on the ground. And then we would find out what their symptoms were, just the basics of what was wrong uh, through our translators. And then we would send them to wait with their little cards that had information on them. And it was really funny, I was telling my mom this. You can see three of the four of those women had babies. And what they would do is they would come up and their card would say there was two people with them. But it just looked like the one woman because the babies were on their backs. And all of a sudden, they would like flip that baby around, and there it was. And I was like, oh, surprise. Okay. And here they are waiting. And here is um, our first medical camp. Back in the back where the curtains are, you can see um, that is where the doctor was. So my aunt was one of the doctors, my aunt Tracy, my mom's sister. And um, we also had another doctor that was from Kenya. His name was Dr. John. So we had two doctors, and the people on the right are waiting for their uh, their medicine. They've already seen the doctor. And on the left is our pharmacy, and they're filling out prescriptions. Here's my Aunt Tracy in action. That child was not very happy. Most of the people liked us. The little children, I don't think they had seen a lot of white people, so they were really <laughs> Here is our pharmacy. We had lots and lots of pills. I want to thank y'all so much, especially for the pills that you collected. I saw, I bet I wrote down on every single person's card that came to me, back pain, uh, joint pain, leg pain, arm pain, like everybody had so much pain because they have to walk so much and carry so much. So we used those pills, Tylenol, ibuprofen, and everything like that, like nobody's business. We used it all. Oh, sorry. And here they are in the pharmacy waiting for their pills and we would um, bring them to them, explain them to them, how you're supposed to use them, and then have them take some of it in front of us. And here they are walking back. A lot of people would walk several days. Um, we had two people that walked overnight, they said, and when they got there, they actually got saved while they were there. And that was really exciting. Um, big praise. And this is the last church that we went to. As you can see, like on the inside, it looks just like the other churches on the outside. But on the inside, you can see how much care they put into it. Um, the missionaries told us that they don't actually put a lot of um, money into their houses, but they use it for their churches because they really want their churches to look nice and inviting to people. And you can't really see it, but in the back is actually a stained glass window. And then we spent a day in an orphanage, which is definitely my favorite part. This is where we did the clinic at the orphanage. 
here's the kids, they're playing with jump ropes, and um, we did the punch balls and the beach balls and frisbees, we brought all that with us. They loved it. Here they are with their stuffed animals. We brought a ton of stuffed animals with us. Here's my favorite girl. Her name is Sarah, but it's pronounced Sarah. She was adorable. Here they all are together, and right after this, they sang a song about God is our Father. It's very sweet. Here's the show. This is an outhouse. Basically, this was at the orphanage, but they had them at a few different churches as well. And so if you were lucky, you got to use the show. If you were not lucky, you used a bush. <laughs> In a bush. Not one of my fonder memories. <laughs> These are um, what they call bomas, and this is where the majority of the people in the bush live. They live in these type of houses with um, like just sticks and stuff as their fences and such. This is Moses. He was my translator for a good portion of the week, and these are his three boys. And this is his boma, and they're made out of sticks and manure. That is what that is on the outsides, which is pretty shocking to me when I realized that. And then um, he actually took us inside of his boma. It was very dark and uh, very smoky because they don't have very good ventilation, but they cook in there. And that is his wife and his mother and his two five-week-old um, twin daughters, Sylvia and Rachel. So all of them live inside this little boma. Plus, he has another son. And this is their bed. This was the only real bed. There was another place that they called a bed, but it was like a trash bag. <coughs> and here's where they lived. <coughs> and you can see, like, it's a wonder that they don't have more health problems living in this type of situation. But the girls earlier were smell smelling my bracelet, and it smells kind of rough. And that's why, because, you know, everything, that's how they live all the time in these small houses. But this is the city, the town that they lived in, that was, you know, outside of the bush that the missionaries lived in. And as you can see, it's not a whole lot better. And there's the donkeys. And these are some of the people in the bush. The older boys, which Moses' older boy was doing this as well, they actually, if they can't go to school, then they take care of the livestock. And so they're out like with the goats, taking care of them and uh, watching over them. And they have to travel long distances with the livestock because they don't have enough water for their animals. And they can't find water anywhere. So they have to travel with them, sometimes for days at a time, looking for water. All the kids were very sweet. They loved playing. They loved all the toys that we brought. They're also very dirty because they don't have the water. They were like, covered in dirt all the time. And flies. I don't know if you can see very well, but he has probably about 30 flies on him. And all the people, pretty much all the people, had flies on them. Um, and it's really hard, like, for me, living on a farm, like, I'm used to the animals having flies on them. But we sprayed them, and we fly tap them, you know? That's what you do to take care of them. But these were like people and children that had flies on them, and they were so used to it that they didn't like brush them off or like get upset about it. They just like left them on there and had them like going in their eyes and in their, <coughs> in their mouth and in their noses, and that was pretty rough. But they're also very happy, and um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of love and a sense of community there, and they really uh, reach out to each other and take care of each other. This is me and the guys and my roommate is Stephanie Ann, and we are going on the safari, which we did the last day. These are the animals we saw. The water buffalo, the zebra, the lion, the um, giraffe, and the two monkeys. See that big monkey? It jumped into our van and stole our snacks. Oh, that's rude. <laughs> this is a really neat story. Um, these birds are called the weaver birds, and what happens with these birds is the female bird um, has the male bird make her a nest, and if she doesn't like it, then the male bird makes another nest, and this keeps going until the female bird actually, you know, approves of the nest. <laughs> but what is really beautiful about 
about this story is that in Africa, the women are very devalued and they are just treated like livestock. The men actually walk around with two sticks. One is for the livestock and one is the wife beating stick for the women. And um, it was it was sad, but it was neat at the same time to see that, you know, God has created the birds where they understand the importance of the female and the male. And hopefully we can teach the people, you know, to get back to that. This is their nest. But this female is very happy. <laughs> so here you can see Africa, and you can see that it is beautiful. And there are a lot of awesome things that God is doing there, but there are also um, a lot of needs, and water being a particular physical need. And there's a lot of spiritual need, because a lot of people who aren't Christians are still going to the witch doctor to try to solve their problems and to uh, fix them and make them better. So Don and Paul and Nichols are really doing some awesome things there. And I just want to thank you all so much for everything that you collected and for all of your prayers. And just on behalf of me and my aunt Tracy there and our whole team, we um, we just appreciate everything that you did. And it wouldn't have been the same at all without you and without you supporting us. And I just want to thank you and tell you that God is awesome. Amen.